Woohoo, I see we're on there. Hello, everyone. We are going live. We are here with Global Deaf Women hosting our second Light of Deaf Women interview. We are here today with Michelle Lapides and Catherine Lees. Hello, this is Catherine saying hello. I'd like you both, this is Sophia now, I'd like you both to introduce yourself and explain your background, where you're from. This is Catherine. I will refer to Michelle to go first. This is Michelle signing. Hi. Okay. Thank you so much, Sophia, for having us here tonight. I'm so excited. We're having so much fun having this conversation with you all here going live. So I first want to introduce myself. I'm Michelle Lees. I'm the co-founder and co-owner of Executive Marketing and Branding here at Duzenu Innovations, which we sign as Duzenu, this sign with double X fingers. Hi everyone, this is Catherine speaking. I'm Catherine Lees, this is my name sign, and I am the head of business development and operations here at Duzenu. And of course, I am the co-owner and co-founder as well. So right now, both of us are here in Austin, Texas. Um, so that's it, we're working out of our office doing our live interview. And this is Sophia. I'd like to showcase now their page in the Light of Deaf Women book. This is Catherine saying, that is beautiful. So this is Sophia. I want to let everyone who's watching tonight know that the cover of the book, the beautiful artwork that was designed, was designed by Michelle, who's joining us tonight. She did a beautiful job designing the cover, and we really went through a lot of revisions, and I think this was the third design we finally agreed on. So I really have to tell you that I felt that this was such a perfect embodiment and is so beautiful, how she created the light backdrop behind the wording. And that's really signifying the representation of light within all women and allowing women, deaf women to dream, to share their journeys. And I thought it was such a beautiful pictorial of that. So the second thing I want to share with you is, is that the kickstart that we'll be doing to launch our book, it was very successful. And, you know, I think we raised about $1,000 to make that publication happen. And that went globally. So I can never forget that. It was an exciting moment. So as I'm looking back and reading that and remembering your story, I'm so excited. But it's wonderful to have you guys here. You've been operating Duzenu for one year now. And um, I know it started when you guys were laid off initially from your job. Can you explain a little bit about how that pushed you guys into starting the company? This is Catherine. Yes, actually. So just today before this live, Michelle and I were looking at each other. And we said, you know, we should read our story again. We should go back to the book and reread what we shared during that time a year ago. So, wow, looking back, a lot has happened. I know sometimes we forget, you know, as life flies by and the every day becomes the norm, we kind of forget what has happened in our path to lead us there. So, you know, during that time, I remember feeling like, oh, you know, oh, my, my vision and my five-year plan has been totally disrupted by getting laid off. But again, as I said in the story, it was really a blessing in disguise, so to speak, you know, being laid off is really just the way, kind of a push for me to jump forward full time with my passions. So I know I think it's better that way to kind of be pushed. Some people like to slowly integrate and to know, you know, start their passions on the side while they're still working a full time job and make a slow transition. But for me, I just feel like getting laid off. I didn't want to go through the motions of looking for a job again. So I just jumped head first. And Michelle, would you agree? This is Michelle speaking. Yes, I have to say, though, the beginning, I felt it was very tough. You know, a lot of people says, think it was easy. Oh, everything looks good. You're making posts on social media. Everything seems so happy. But that's actually not the case. It was actually a rough start. And I'm sure all business owners can say the same thing. Um, you know, business requires a special kind of trust and a special grit, a determination, if you will, to keep things going. So that initial layoff was really the universe's way of telling me, OK, it's time to shift gears. It's it's time to do this full time. And I do think it's an interesting fact, though, that the two of us were laid off at exactly the same time from completely different companies, though. And it happened for both of us. This is Catherine Wright in different states, in different industries. It just happened like kismet. 
So this is Michelle saying, yeah, really it happened of July of 2016 and we met at an NAD conference. So we met and we were talking and really it was like instantaneous. The two of us had such a connection. And I was like, wow, we had such different skill sets though because I see that Catherine had more behind the scenes. She was more doing like accounts payable and a lot of things like that, which were not actually my strengths. My strengths are more doing the front end, the design part and that, you know, the branding is really where my focus is. So when I met her, I met Catherine, I thought, oh my gosh, she's filling the gaps of what my skill set needs. So I went to an event in LA and it was a New Year's Eve party. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going, you know, um, I was living in LA at the time and she was in Boston. And, you know, so I said, okay, it was the first time we were planning to do something. I think it was like 28 days, right, that we were doing a New Year's Eve party it was for 300 people. So we had 28 days to plan something. So I invited Catherine to come with me. And this is Michelle, it was a fundraiser. So I was like, come on, let's do it. Let's start planning. You know, we'll tell people to go to the venue. We'll see how it looks and let's start making our, our designs. We went and we did a tasting with the menu. And obviously, honestly, everything went so well. And the event was such a success. You know, after that moment, people started coming up to us, asking us, are we business consultants? How can we plan more events for them? So that's how the idea really started because we both weren't working full time. So it just felt right. We thought, oh, this is something we need to do. We need to do marketing or business or something. So as we got laid off, it was like, okay, this is time to take on this work. So we got our LLC, our license. We went into official business with Duzenu Industries. It was the day before we got laid off that it was finalized and it was so amazing. So really it was like, ever since that moment, I went forward and never looked back. And this is Sophia. So that kind of, you feel like the path was picked for you, right? It was just naturally where you were meant to be. So, you know, I did see one post though that Catherine posted just recently saying that today, I'm thinking back to what her post said, you know, marketing today is really dominated by the male, male industry. You know, there aren't a lot of women in the marketing field. So how do you guys handle that challenge of being in a male dominated industry? And this is Catherine responding. You know, that was actually from an article that post, it was written last year. And in the article, it said 55 years ago was the first ever advertising agency established by a woman. And I did, at first I was like, wow, how could that be so? Because I've seen other, you know, independent creative women out there doing logo design and doing, you know, branding work, graphic design, marketing. So I wasn't sure if that was actually true and factual. So I did some more research and I was like, why did it say 55 years ago? And then I realized that's true. Even 55 years ago, women didn't even have voting rights at that time. So, you know, women still hadn't been allowed to open a bank account even. This is Sophia, you're right, a long time ago. They weren't, it had to be under a man companion to set up a bank account. This is Catherine, could you imagine? And this is Michelle, 55 years ago, feels like nothing. And this is Catherine saying, right. So that's the reason why, I mean, it was only 55 years ago that women really, women's rights were enacted and things, so business started running for women at that time. So it makes sense. Even without having a bank account, there were some women who found a way to get a loan and start a business and go through the motions. So that really made me realize, wow, how true it is that women in the creative field, we've always been there, but it was still under a men owned industry and a men dominated industry. So today there's still only 0.1% of women in that field. So that means 0.999% are all male running it. And this is Sophia, right? And now to top that off, both of you are deaf women in the industry. How many other deaf women are owning business and marketing and doing you know, consultant work, right? How amazing. And this is Michelle, imagine. And if they are, if you're out there, come partner with us, contact us. Let's change the statistics. We don't want 0.01% anymore. So we do post on Duzenu's website a lot. As you can see, we have this post 0.1%. So, I mean, that's really it, 0.01%. The irony now though, today we know that we have 85% of women who have the buying power, which means women are making the decisions. They're making the decisions about what's being bought, about where families are going on vacation, about buying furniture, whatever the case may be, women have the buying power. 85% of the buying power. So look at the irony when we look back, because where is the women-owned business and marketing?
that's only 0.01%, that kind of makes us here at Dozenu the experts. And we're looking to change that though. We don't want that to be the standard any longer. And this is Catherine. I wanna to add to what Michelle said, talking about how 85% of women hold the buying power. That's correct because those people in the marketing industry know they need to market to women because they're using Instagram, Facebook, social media, websites, different research tactics to market to women. So the marketing that we see that is all geared towards women, it is designed by men. It's created by men to appeal to women. So that's really the irony there as well because men are owning 0.99% of the business. But, you know, I mean, well, most of them are, are, are doing it to market to women. So it's interesting. We realize that women should be owning and running companies in the industry for marketing, for branding, because then it can become more relatable. I think women-owned marketing really delivers more, will get more numbers, and will know how to apply and appeal to women. So there is irony there with the statistics. And this is Michelle signing. You know what? And another point I want to bring up is being deaf as well. You know, from my experience, but this being our sixth year operating, well, you know, we have about five years really operating, but it's amazing to see, well, that deaf people really are the experts. They are incredible designers in a visual sense. They are able to provide such a visual depiction and graphic and have a strong eye for marketing and design. How, you know, deaf people have a way, a creative way to see how to just center something, how to create imagery through marketing and set up a photo. So that's really a great niche for the deaf community, for deaf women to get into designing and marketing. So we kind of have a two up in this situation as deaf women. And this is Sophia responding, right? You actually read my mind. You're reading my mind for the next question. I want to ask you that actually. So you've mentioned, you know, how the marketing industry is dominated by men. Is there anything you think that, you know, you want to highlight or what is the most unique experience you've had or, or anything that you see specifically about deaf women in the community and what they need uh, as far as marketing? Anything you want to share over the last five years that's really a highlight? And this is Catherine responding. If I could share, it, it would take me five hours, to be honest with you, and we don't have time for that. But if I had to pick one thing, one thing that I see, Mm. I think honestly that within the deaf community, we see and we hear and we feel a lot about collaboration, which is true. And we understand the concept of collaboration very well. We know what it means. But the question comes of, are we doing it? Are we open to accepting collaborative work? Are we doing it? We understand the concept and, the, and the, the motivation is there, but are we putting it into action? So a lot of times when collaborations happen or a lot of people think of collaborations, they think of it as a free service. Okay, you do it for me and I will shoulder the hard work, but it doesn't mean that. Collaboration doesn't mean that one person's doing the other work and the other person will look good for it and take the credit. You know, if one person is, you know, more skilled and able to do it, they're not going to shoulder the brunt of all the work. It has to be a, a collaboration in the sense that both people are mutually benefiting and working together to advance each other. This is Sophia responding, right, to lift each, each other up, you know, to really accelerate and advance each other for their skill set to work together and learn together and to make it, you know, a memorable experience. And I think that's something great that we can share within the deaf female community. So even through the book, The Light of Deaf Women, you can showcase that. Um, now in marketing, I know you realize that you, you have to bring your own light to each marketing experience. So I'm wondering, how have you seen that within the deaf community and deaf women? And this is Michelle. You know, I want to backtrack a little bit. Talking about marketing, marketing is 100% dependent on investments. So business will have to spend money on legal fees. They have to spend money on, you know, so many different things are required to start up a company. So for marketing, 100% of your money, you will see is it will be invested, but it will come back. It will. It's worth it to invest in your marketing to earn a profit. 
You know, everyone out there really has great ideas. There are so many people that have wonderful products and have created things and services, but how people spread the word and get their name out there to get their products and services out there so that it can be bought so that they can earn a profit the critical role is in marketing. That's how you get the word out. Once people start supporting your ideas and your products, then they will start supporting you. They will use your products and use your services. So it's critical for a new company to make a budget for their marketing. It will really help their success. So as we're talking about the light of deaf woman, yes, I have to say marketing is really an umbrella term. It's a huge concept. You know, there's branding under that, there's advertising, it entails PR, public relations. I mean, it's so many things. And now with the advent of social media, there's such powerful platforms out there, you know, and there are free platforms for marketing as well. So once you have a vision or an idea, a product or a service, if you put marketing out there on social media in any form, the reach, the possibilities are endless. So you see that social media is really the light. If you put your light into it uh, as a, an individual and show yourself through social media, you will be successful. You know, a long time ago, you had to pay for marketing. It was only through published documents, articles. It was, it was a paid publishing sense. You know, it had to be something tangible. But now there are free platforms out there where you can take advantage. It's incredible. And this is Catherine. I want to add to that idea about social marketing. It's really a place for you to share your light, most definitely. For example, in the book, The Light of Deaf Women, that is a place, that is one place also where you can find inspiration. So you can open the book. Anyone can open the book. You'll see within those pages a small part of self within the space. You'll say, I'm a woman. I've lived in this you know, environment. For me, I could say, I'm a woman. I live in Austin, Texas. Maybe another woman out there from Austin, Texas reading this saying, oh, this is so relatable to me. So that's another part of sharing and finding your light is that you will inspire someone else. So all it takes is for you to put it out there online and someone else can be inspired by that. You will, you will reach other people who are like you and people will feel the connection. They will feel the light and the inspiration from what your message is. And again, one thing I wanna say is that you can find inspiration in everything. You know, and it doesn't matter how small or how big it is. So I think that's one place to start, definitely with the book, The Light of Deaf Woman. This is Michelle, I love that. And this is Sophia, yes. You know what, I have to look at one more thing here. I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, so is there anything you want to share, either of you, and you want to let the world know about yourselves? Is there anything planned that you have in the works, something in the future upcoming? Uh, any breakthroughs you guys have had that you'd like to share? Hmm, this is Michelle. I'm thinking. This is Catherine. I will refer to you, Michelle. This is Michelle. I think one big and exciting thing is the opportunities we have with Dozenu right now are really we're hiring for the first time full-time employees to join our team. Oh, congratulations. This is Sophia. Yeah, this is Michelle. You know, five years later, we're finally doing it. Woof. It's been five years that it's just Catherine and I working on contracts and working together as a team to grow. And the growth has been such a blessing that now we're in a position where we're ready to go to the next level or level up how I like to look at it. And we can start hiring and start moving on to take on bigger projects, you know, so that feels amazing. It's exciting to grow our team. This is Catherine. Like Michelle just said, uh, having a breakthrough, I think of it as... Uh, what are the words on is I realized that I can't do everything on my own now. You know, that was my breakthrough to realize I just, I can't do everything. So, you know, I had to really think and I was making my to-do list and I was like, okay, as an entrepreneur, there are all these things that come up, but there are some things that fall through the cracks and I need someone there so that when they fall through the cracks, they can help. When I noticed these things about myself, I was feeling I'm good, not good enough. I can't do this. I need to give up. But you know what? I'm sure there has been many times where I felt I wanted to give up and it wasn't going to work. And this, this isn't the path for me. But then five years later, here I am. And I, I held on and was steadfast. So one thing that I think uh, that goes back to the book as well is that you can open the book and see there are so many women. 
You are not alone. You don't have to do everything by yourself. That's part of the breakthrough I had. I don't have to do everything myself. If you want to talk to someone, you can, you know, take a break from work. You can talk to another person, another woman and get ideas and get inspired. You, it, you know, you can spend time with other people and use that as time to grow and build. So that's something I recognized. We are all super women in our own way, but we are not super women in every single aspect for every task. That's what I realized. And this is Sophia, right? If you fall, you get up again, right? That's why we have the sunrise and the sunset. Every day starts anew. That's a reminder to us. It's a new day and we can start again. So I like the quote you have in the book. I'm going to show it here because I think it really fits what we're talking about right now. It says, experience as much as you can. Experience everything, everything, everywhere, everywhere you go, but make your choices to impact women because that will be everlasting. That means, you know, even as frustrations come up, stay strong keep going, persevere. And you never know if you will inspire someone, you know, there will be rich, there's a rich resource of information there. So how wonderful. This is Catherine and Michelle was wondering, yes, absolutely. And this is Sophia. And you know, for the future deaf women that are coming up in business and want to be involved in any industry, especially in male dominated industries, what's your advice to them of how we can be ahead of the game? Hmm. This is Catherine. Oh, finding that skill, finding that emotional, you know, layer, finding that one thing that men are lacking in. For example, empathy. You know, men have empathy, yes, but you know, it's always easier to find empathy with people who are like you, people who know and have had that experience. So one common ground for women is that we understand what it means to be a woman and we can find the common ground there. We can have empathy and understanding of the life of a woman where a man is lacking in that. They don't have that experience of day-to-day -day life. So I think that's one way to get ahead in the industry and to really recognize that that's what's missing. I mean, we can still recognize the contribution of men, but we can communicate very clearly how to get ahead of them by recognizing what it is to be a woman within each other. You know, going through our experiences, going through years of seeing what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. And this is Michelle. You know, I think that women and men, non-binary, it can be any spectrum of gender. Everyone faces the same I don't know what I would say. The same imposter syndrome will come up. You know, that's really a hot term right now. It's kind of trending because a lot of people can relate to that. And I think being a woman has being women, women are more impacted by the idea of imposter syndrome because we're always trying to, you know, we're very emotional. And we're trying to go ahead and do business with a tough face and not show our vulnerability. And we have to be, you know, so independent and self-sustainable. But we're always thinking maybe in the back of our mind, are we not good enough? Do they know more than I do? Maybe they can answer a question better than me. There are all these negative thoughts that really come up, but you know more than you think you do. We are our own worst critic, as they say. So, you know, you have, yes, this is Sophia. Yes. And this is Michelle, but you have to keep going. You have to persevere. And I think that applies to any gender. So I think we as women experience that more than most. This is Sophia beautifully said. Yes, that is a hot topic right now. And it's funny that you say that in the women's cohort group, I was actually talking about that. It came up today in another group I'm working in where a lot of people were feeling imposter syndrome. And it's really about how we recognize ourselves, and we have to notice it and keep going on. We can't let it stop us. We just take it one day at a time and persevere. And this is Michelle Wright. And, you know, a lot of people look on social media and see everybody's doing something and posting and showing their successes and sharing new, exciting launches. And a lot of times we feel like, oh, they're doing all this stuff and I'm not doing as well. But you know what? It's not true. That is imposter syndrome in its best. So you can't let that stop you and say, oh, I can't do it. I can't keep up with them. You know what? Maybe there are people out there doing things with less experience and they're doing things, but you have more expertise. So you need to be confident in yourself and go forward and don't let imposter syndrome get in the way of what you can actually do.
So really, you know, you have to just throw it out the window, move forward and be confident with yourself. And this is Sophia. I love that answer. That is a perfect answer. So I want to see if there are any questions. Hang on just a sec. Let me go to the chat. Do you guys have any questions, by the way? This is Michelle. Do you have any questions for us? Type them in the comments and we will do our best. Okay, so most people are liking everything as we're going along. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up coming up. This is Sophia speaking. And this is Catherine. I don't know if this is related to exactly what we we're just talking about, but anytime anybody has a question or wants to reach out to us for a comment or is wondering about something, just email us, contact us, and we're always willing to talk to you guys and answer the best we can. I think the point is really buy the book, go to Amazon. Sophia, where can they get the book? on Amazon. And this is Sophia responding. Yes, on Amazon. And also leave a comment, leave a review. We need more reviews on the book. That would be such a great help to have. And also, if you guys know any hearing parents with deaf children, please let them know about this book. There was one time that I was actually visiting at my in-laws house and there was someone who came to fix the plumbing. I don't remember exactly something was wrong, but what happened is that plumber had a daughter who was five years old uh, and my mother-in-law happened to have the book and give it who was deaf. So he, she gave him the book and he was crying. And I thought, oh my gosh, I had this realization. I never thought of the role it could play in the lives of hearing parents with deaf children. So there are people out there who need your services. How can people reach out to Duzenu Innovations? I'll put your contact information in the chat and I'll sure to post it. This is Michelle. Also, I want to say, I want to add what you said about reviews. Really, you know, 4.5% of people will read the reviews before making a decision to purchase something. So it is really so very important that you really leave reviews if you love something. Um, you know, there are so many purposes behind reviews and they will benefit a service. They will encourage people to buy it. So 4.5% of people is really a lot. So I think you need to do it. And this is Sophia, any last comments before we wrap up the day? This is Michelle, you know, I really wanna say thank you, Sophia. Thank you for inspiring so many people and for using your platform and recognizing that there are many women out there. Like, look at this book. This is Sophia, right? There are 89 women, almost 90 stories in this book. This is Catherine, wow. Yeah, this is Michelle. There are 89 women that you are showcasing and highlighting and that leads you to think how many more? What's next, you know, it's so exciting. And this is Sophia. I have to thank you both and thank you everyone who joined us today to watch. I have to say thank you to Michelle and to Catherine and to our interpreter, Alana. Thank you all so much for joining us for this interview. And I wish you so much more success and growth and expansion for Duzenu in the future. Bye. Thank you. This is Catherine and Michelle. Bye-bye.